have the camera on. My girlfriend Katie, she thinks there's something in the house. I don't know. You believe me, right? I think we're gonna have a very interesting time capturing whatever paranormal phenomena is occurring or is not occurring. Windows are locked, doors are locked, alarm is on. Hearing a weird sound. Something's here. I feel it breathing on me. There's footsteps in, but there's no footsteps out. Oh God. Oh my God. If you do try to play games with it, that's inviting it in. Jeez, this looks like something bit you. It's not the house, it's me. You cannot run from this, it will follow you. I'm in control. You're not in control. What's happening to me? This thing left a message. If it's not a ghost, what is it? We're going to expand our weekly video segment to take you into the back shelves of your local video store. Back where it says horror videos and where kids are devouring some awful films that we call the video nasties. Are you freebasing inquiring minds want to know? I have to break free from this culture of mechanical reproductions and the thick incrustations dying on the surface. Fuck the prime time, bitch! Pain, I can assure you, will be exquisite. As for our deaths, come with me and be immortal. We have such sights to show you. We've got to return some video. Hello, horror hounds, and welcome to the It Slays podcast. I'm your humble host, Rowan. It's Exilia. It's a bag of expired batteries, Mike. And we have a very special guest, super excited, Patrick Dunn in the building from every movie on Netflix. Horror movie on Netflix. Netflix. I don't know. Yeah, every every (laughs) movie on Netflix. Get your shit together. You so just, when, I just felt like I was just condemned to another like 50 years of whatever <laughs> it is we're doing. <laughs> this is what happens every time they allow me every to drink. Every time Rowan takes a sip of alcohol. Of alcohol. I normally don't <laughs> because I, I'll fuck it up. But you know what? We're drinking. We're having a good time. It's also keeping in spirit with Rowan fucking up words. So it's all good. I, That's right. I can't wait to see what happens at the end of this podcast. I mean, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you to say the name of my podcast again. <laughs> and we'll see like how many of the five words you you nail. That's right. <laughs> You'll be like Patrick from Netflix. <laughs> he, he is the promoted. official rep of Netflix, <laughs> and he's here to talk to us. But uh, no, Patrick, yeah. introduce yourself a bit. Talk that shit. I oh, talk that shit. I'll talk that shit. <laughs> 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 Hello, I'm Patrick. I'm from a podcast called Every Horror Movie on Netflix, uh, on which we watch, review, and discuss every horror movie on Netflix. We are four years and a hundred and some episodes into that mission, and it's been great. And we have a lot of fun. And we learned about you guys a little while ago because Rowan very kindly gave us a shout out. And I want to say a beautiful i would go so far as to use the term romance has blossomed between these podcasts which has been great oh i thought you were gonna say between you and rowan oh I mean, well maybe, that well maybe that too, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's the it's the bromance of a lifetime i mean rowan I, yes. does <laughs> blossom romances with everybody that he's it's true with, essentially. i mean yeah the, the only reason i, I hesitated was because if i was describing the relationship between me and rowan it would be a much stronger word than romance i've just <laughs> i've just i've just met you two my give a time within an hour (laughs) yeah no i remember coming across your guys's podcast i just you know i'm always looking for horror movie podcasts because as exilia would say i have to obsess about everything i enjoy so uh (laughs) um did you see mike's face (laughs) 
<laughs> but uh yeah no it it was awesome and i think you're one of only like three that kind of stuck in my rotation wow i kind of got tired or bored of most of them and you guys are fantastic and yeah it's i've a- gotten to know all you guys so. right now it's weird because it's almost like i'm cooking supper hearing your voice <laughs> <laughs> we'll have oh. it like on the big like speaker and oh yeah that's heartwarming honestly (laughs) (laughs) you're that integral to our lives (laughs) well i feel right at home (laughs) (laughs) so i figure we would uh start with you know a simple question although it may be a little redundant because we you know we're drinking and talking before we hit record because you know i'm never smart enough to capture all of that but uh patreon content exactly Good thinking, Patrick. Well, we don't think that's smart about our own Yeah, podcast. I was like... Oh, oh well, no, you I... actually have a Patreon. We do not. I know that we don't so. really. <laughs> we don't really. <laughs> someday, so, someday we will, we will get to it. But no, I figured we could talk about what we've been watching. Media, TV. I don't know how you are with reading, Patrick, if you read a lot like we do. But I always include books because Exilium, I, Exilium is already pulling the list out right now. No, I every think I book only she's just read this finished week. one book. And, and you're the guest. Let's start with you. Oh, gosh, yes. I'm, I'm so glad that uh, I had a moment while you were talking to frantically rearrange my mind and go, oh, what have I been watching or reading? Um, I... I'm a huge comic book nerd and uh, I'm always reading horror comics. So most recently I read The Low, Low Woods, which is uh, from Joe Hill's imprint at DC Comics called Hill House Comics. Yeah. Um, And it's written by Carmen Maria Machado, who is just a fucking (sighs) outstanding author. Yeah. Um, And it's about these two uh, friends in a coal mining town. And a lot of strange things are going on in the coal mining town. Being that it's Carmen Maria Machado, like, there's uh, a lot of great feminist themes and and imagery in the story. And it was just fascinating to me to see her do a comic for, I think, the first time. Because I fucking love her body and other parties, which I read for the first time a few months ago. Um, So really enjoyed that. And I also just watched Insidious Chapter 2 for our podcast, which is one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had in the theater. (laughs) And it was, I don't know if it was as terrifying watching it on Netflix, but fun to revisit. So that's what I've been up to. Nice. Uh, How about you, Mike? Um, Listen, I'm going to be my same boring ass self. I have not been watching barely anything except for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I'm trying to plow through this. Every week it's going to be Housewives and maybe something else. I've been watching a lot of twitch so that also is just sort of like my like brain candy but i have just started reading my year of rest and relaxation which i owned a copy of several years ago and never read and i lost it in my move and then within about three weeks i'd say about four people whose taste i adore uh said it was one of the best books they've ever read so i said i have to go out and buy a new copy and start reading it so that's what i'm doing right now so far so good uh how about you exilia what have we been watching oh we've been watching seinfeld a lot of seinfeld a lot of seinfeld i need to laugh <laughs> what else have I watched? I don't think I've watched anything else. I've, um, I talked a few months ago about the book What Happened to You by Bruce D. Perry, but I, anyways, it doesn't matter. I've stopped and started that one. I'm almost done it. And, um, I've read The Civil Sphere by Jeffrey Alexander because I needed to in order to finish my thesis. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. <laughs> fun stuff <laughs> i'm never that good of a reader uh it was 800 pages yeah see and i'm always cheating i'm too busy reading christopher pike stuff to uh, uh reading is reading ah uh, that's right <laughs> uh so i'm all... it isn't when you're in a good reads competition <laughs> yeah yeah i chat <laughs> 800 I ch- pages i challenged 30. myself this year <laughs> to read 40 books 50 i thought no it's 40 and i think i'm on book like 12 right now and it's yeah it's not really working out uh so hopefully next year i can do better <laughs> like isn't it november <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly i was like oh you got time no you don't no no i don't <laughs> uh so i 
have been reading uh, Christopher Pike's Witch. Uh, yes, that's such a good one. Which I've really been enjoying. I enjoy any of these cheesy Christopher Pike books. I've also been reading a horror comic. I finally went down to my shop and picked up all my single issues. And uh, I've started reading uh, The Nice House on the Lake. Uh, which there is, you know, all this hype around when it came out. And lucky, lucky enough. I, I pulled it at my comic book store, so I had issues. Uh, it's pretty good. It was definitely not what I thought it was going to be, which I feel, you know, comic books, horror comic books tend to always do. Uh, I thought it was going to be kind of a straight up, like, slasher type thing, where it's more of like a post-apocalyptic kind of read i uh, and really i've just been watching a lot of stuff uh i know we chatted before we started recording but i went and saw last night in soho yes and yeah awesome uh we gave our opinions on that on the last episode we released uh me and colton and i'm trying to think what else i have seen recently i started watching i know what you did last summer the tv series uh i started that last night we did watch sex education the new season yes the new sex education season which is that show's always I love that show fantastic and yeah i feel like i've haven't seinfeld i've been watching seinfeld we've just been gunning through the seasons because it finally came the canadian netflix and i just feel that it's yeah it's one of those things you can put on it's mindless i can like just be scrolling on my phone but uh yeah i mean that's pretty much all i've been watching we can't go on forever about what i've been watching i watch so many terrible things i say we get into it because you know patrick's not used to seeing mike and exilia just eye roll me all evening <laughs> but i made the decision that all my picks this year year were double features which they they love because there's nothing more they love to do with their free time <laughs> than watch movies that they never wanted to watch in the first place okay rowan this roll this... one and two was such a good pick because that's what you fucking are <laughs> rowan this might be the key this might be the key to our bromance because i have also forced our podcast into watching not double features but like whole franchises which you participated <laughs> in one of those that's with right us. yeah you did all that was a great episode by all the nightmare on elm street movies movies with us yeah and i've 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 been the main person to blame for the the couple of times that we've done that <laughs> i mean if you're gonna if you're gonna do it go big or go home right right exactly i had this on my list uh and that is the i mean you know if you clicked on the episode uh we're talking about paranormal activity one and two uh films which are I mean, I think it's safe to say they're they're kind of like cultural icons now of the late two thousands. But yeah, I never I never saw them when they came out ever. I ignored them. I guess maybe that hipster mindset where I was just kind of like, this is too popular. This is too popular. It's like a popcorn movie. I I'm not gonna ever watch it. Le <laughs> leave me alone so I can watch my Freddy's Dead for the. <laughs> Eight millionth time. Sorry. Yeah, so I think maybe we should start at number one, and we got a lot to get into. So, Paranormal Activity 1, it came out in 2007, directed by Oren Pele, or Pele. The only th other thing he's directed is Area 51. Yeah, a producer on a lot of stuff, so I feel like he definitely you know, made a good deal with Blumhouse where he's like, I'll, I'll produce some stuff. But uh, yeah, those are the only two things that he's ever directed. Dude, he produced Insidious Chapter 2. That was that was a weird moment of synchronicity last night. I was watching Insidious Chapter 2 for our thing and I was like, oh, hey, that guy. Yeah, so I mean, this is kind of my first time experiencing anything really to do with him. I was very late to the Insidious series. I, I only watched Insidious like... Two years ago, maybe? Two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like two years ago. Wait, okay, what's the one I always get it mixed up with? I have a Sinister. 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 Oh, Sinister, Every, yeah. I cannot keep them straight. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just all these different, like, synonyms for evil, Bro. more or less. Yeah. Like, insidious, <laughs> sinister, malignant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, I never noticed that. <laughs> that, like, one word, you know, like, kind of cutting yeah, title. Yeah. Yeah. So I figure we'll uh, we'll 
start with the bio and then we'll uh we'll get into it uh for paranormal activity it is what happens when you sleep soon after moving into a suburban tract home katie and mika mika Mika. Mika. They Mika. say Mika, but anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> Exilia has some doesn't opinions matter. on this name. Are we going to argue with the people who wrote and starred in the movie? I mean, I know people that their names spelled like that, and they are all named Micah. Yeah. Uh, so it they become matter. increasingly disturbed by what appears to be a supernatural presence. Hoping to capture evidence of it on film, they set up video cameras in the house, but are not prepared for the terrifying events that follow. Which is interesting, because if you watch the second one, they should be prepared, considering her sister just went through it. <laughs> but okay. Retcons, but, uh, retcons. Let's uh, start with our first experiences. Uh, have you seen this before? Uh, you know, what? what is your uh, reality with paranormal activity? Uh, we'll start with you, Mike. Oh, me. Um, Honestly, I am in the exact same boat as you. I, for whatever reason... Maybe it was hipster. I just didn't go to see it at the time. And it was years and years. And I was like, no, I found footage. Absolutely not. So this was my first time watching it. Literally. <laughs> In 2021, it was the first time I watched Paranormal Activity. I'm almost ashamed to admit it because that's kind of like a really glaring uh, blind spot in my history of watching horror movies, but that's what it is. So uh, we'll ask you next, Exilia. Ours is short. Yeah, I mean, this <laughs> was the first time I've ever seen it. Very much like Rowan and Mike, like it was a really popular movie. There's a lot of hype around it, and that just like totally turns me off of things. And um, I think at like... least we're all open about being contrarians. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, I don't know, whenever I think about the kind of horror movies I don't like, it would be like this movie, and I can't describe what that means, but it's like these movies from 2008 to like two years ago that were really popular in the theater. I don't know. Anyways, yeah, this is the first time. <laughs> and obviously, I've already said I haven't seen it. Um, I was going to say one thing that's kind of interesting is one of my younger brothers really loves, loves this whole it. series. Like, opening night goes to everyone. And he is not a horror movie guy at all. In fact, most movies that he likes are, is stuff I'm really not into. Okay, that's what it is. That's what it is. I just, like, thought about it. <laughs> there are horror movies that people that don't like horror like. Hmm. Maybe. Does that make sense? But yeah, so I just never saw it because he liked <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm probably not going to like it then. Uh, how about you, Patrick? This is so weird. I, I'm the only person who <laughs> did see it. And I have like kind of the ultimate hipster experience with it. Where it was, I saw it when it was still like doing sort of like making the art house circuit like Ann Arbor where I live was one of the I think 12 cities in the US that it opened in and I saw it at the State Theater which is one of two like kind of small art house theaters we have here in town and I think I went to see it with a friend and if I remember correctly there were like two other people in the theater we might have been the only people in the theater and it terrified me it fucked me up for months I could not oh, sleep for months because of this movie. And I'm not easily susceptible to movies having that kind of an, uh, an impact on me. But, um, yeah, saw it early and it left a mark. Wow. That's really interesting. And interesting to show how, like, information flows. Because by the time it got all the way to us, it was like everybody knew about it. Yeah. Let's get into the meat and potatoes. You know, we always start off with our favorite scene of the film. And Patrick, you have to do us the honors of your favorite scene. Sure. I was I was thinking about this as I watched it, actually, because I felt in my mind that that final scene would be the one that would stick in my head as the best scene because it, it was the one that was like sort of burned into my brain the most and the, and the one that probably fucked me up most but watching it again um my favorite scene is actually it, it's still fairly close to the end but i love the scene where like she just gets dragged out of bed by the fucking demon or whatever and mika has to go and fight the demon we don't see what the fuck happens and it, to me was very unsettling um just yeah you don't that you don't know what's happening and, and it's also such a surreal moment because it's one of the first real like things where it's like where the, where the demon is very like materially 
physically interfering with them. And it was very effective to me. How about you, Exilio? Can I go last? <laughs> Exilio's already getting the shade ready. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. No, let's get the shade ready for her. <laughs> oh. Oh. Mike, how about uh, your favorite scene? I also thoroughly enjoyed the dragging scene because... Again, yeah, it's like that's the kind of first real uh, like manifestation that like kind of like affects them. But other than that, it was like the first scene where she's like standing up for like an hour, just like looking at the bed in the middle of the night and nothing happens. But like the whole time I was watching it, I'm like, OK, <laughs> it's like kind of gripping the chair, like wait for it, wait for it. I just thought that was a really cool. It was, you know, like kind of a really good way to like ratchet up the suspense and it's just like, what's going to happen? And nothing does happen. And I keep thinking about it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> so that one, just for whatever reason, I find people standing in bed, standing over people in bed, like looking at them to be super creepy generally in films anyway. So of course I was going to pick that. <laughs> so mine uh, <laughs> is pretty much any scene with, uh, when I looked up the cast list, he's just dubbed as the psychic. <laughs> uh, especially like the, the his final appearance where they like can't get a hold of the demonologist. So we bring the psychic back and he's basically just like, <laughs> fuck y'all, yeah. you're on your own. <laughs> Like, don't call me again. Lose my number. I also like how she was like, when she realized she had to call him because the demonologist was gone, she was like, well, I don't really like him, but I guess I'll call him. And she's like, why doesn't she like him? Dude, I love that character because, like, how often do you have a movie like this where you bring in the psychic character and the psychic is just like, this is above my pay grade. Like, please let me leave. I don't want to be here. Yeah, uh, this yeah, he's like, like a... I know what happens to the psychics in these movies, and it does not end well. <laughs> right. I'm yeah. out of here. Exactly. How about you, Exilia? Your favorite scene? Um. Okay, so I didn't have one but until I saw the second movie, and it like referenced back to the first movie, and it would be the picture of her that they found in the attic and how it was burned. And so, yeah, like once I saw the scene in the second movie, which we'll talk about later, um, then I was like, okay, like. That's cool. I like that. So that would be it. Or the shadow on the door. Shadows freak me out. Mm. Yeah, kind of that like uh, sleep paralysis vibe. Yeah. That's kind of what the shadow makes me think of. Kind of. That shadow is freaky. Oh, I was just going to say it's one of many like small, subtle details in this movie that just d put my fucking just put all, all you know all, all my like my hairs on end or my, make my skin crawl or I don't know whatever the expression is it just everything about this still gets under my skin I thought that maybe it would be different like seeing it 14 fucking years later for the second time but it still freaked me the fuck out and I was still scared when I went to bed I really like how <laughs> how different we're gonna feel on this oh yeah <laughs> Because I know I mean Exilia, especially uh, with this first one, the the whole time I was watching it, I was just kind of like waiting and waiting. And like, you know, I, I get especially with found footage, like one of the keys that kind of Blair Witch unlocked was, you know, these like long tension buildups really building you up where it's like things are happening but like nothing almost like things that aren't necessarily fully noticeable and then just builds up and i like i don't know i was just like i was waiting for the punch i guess and the the when the punch came i just i don't think it did it for me i was just kind of like yeah okay now i mean we we always talk about maybe i'm just like a sick individual and, yeah. you know, this wasn't uh, the blood and guts I crave or something. Uh, although I will say uh, the tension with the photo for me was the only place I felt tension. Mm -hmm. I think that's just because I find attic scenes super creepy, like when they have to go up into the attic. But my like kind of my main issue with this movie was, I guess, the expectation, like, the stuff like the attic scene, like, when he went up, I'm like, oh, he's gonna get, like, pulled up into the attic, or, like, something's gonna happen. And I just felt like there was no payoff until, like, that last little bit, which, I guess, I don't know, I was just kind of like, th maybe this was, to me, would have worked better as, like, a short or something, not necessarily 
a full out movie, which also I think plays on, I know, my personal taste of I don't like over explanation and stuff where this like you gotta kind of live with the characters and I'm like yeah I don't really give a shit about these characters like let's get to the demons <laughs> get to the demons and yeah I just uh it didn't work out for me I'm sorry guys intellectually I understand all that and also I kind of I kind of want to throw back to something Exilia said earlier where you know you mentioned that this feels like that certain genre of movie that was like 2008 to 2010 whatever that makes total sense to me um and it, and it was sort of that like Blair Witch revival because weirdly like Blair Witch came out everybody fucking loved it it's still iconic from my point of view for for great fucking reason that movie still works like gangbusters and then nobody really did anything like that for yeah 10 15 years and then this movie comes out and it felt sort of revolutionary again and then all of a sudden kicked off just a just this shit slide <laughs> of found footage that really hasn't ended you know yeah a- i really and... no go ahead no go ahead no no you please you. i i will i will i will ramble endlessly please okay. say something <laughs> Um, I think it's really funny that you said revolutionary because we had this conversation about Blair Witch Project tonight, right before we recorded, and I called Blair Witch Project revolutionary and Rowan laughed in my face. And I was like, what? Like, it totally was. It was, yeah. I'm I'm just, I agree (laughs) that Blair Witch Project was revolutionary. Maybe it was the comparison of Blair Witch Project. I hold Blair Witch Project very high up. Mm. My argument, I guess, almost as a four case with Exilia about this was, and maybe, like I said, I, I feel like it's a personal thing. It's a found footage thing. I really enjoy the Blair Witch, but I've revisited the Blair Witch, and I'm like, nothing overly happens in the Blair Witch either. No. They find the guy's fingers <laughs> in the handkerchief. <laughs> Okay, but I, so Blair Witch, we rewatched recently for our podcast too. And it was a similar thing where I was like, okay, you know, does, cause I think I'd only seen it once before. And it was like, okay, does this hold up? Yes. It freaked me the fuck out. Like that yeah. still holds up. Yeah. I mean, for me, for me. Yeah. My thing about the Blair Witch Project is like, yeah, like that movie scared me to death when I saw it when I was a kid, but Maybe the plot doesn't fully hold up to what I remember, which I think is what you're talking about. But I think in a lot of ways, like the making of the Blair Witch Project was really revolutionary and like how they did the marketing and how they did like, I don't know. All the- yeah, yeah, well, it was like early internet viral marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Really. Well, they did a similar thing with this too. You know, it, it yeah. felt it felt new again because weirdly no one had done it since Blair Witch, Mm -hmm. but it was a a lot about this is kind of ripping off the Blair Witch formula. And I would Mm -hmm. say successfully. I kind of, you know how I, cause I know people that have watched the Blair Witch that have never seen the Blair Witch till now. And they don't like it. That have the feelings I have about this. And to me, I just, you know, and I think about other found footage like that, Definitely not as iconic, but that has come out over the years that people have gravitated towards that are like, yeah, you should see this. I really like it. And I just feel like there's something about found footage that it's just really like you got to live in when it came out. I was like totally nostalgic. Like I saw the Blair Witch in the theater. Like when, like when it came out, me and mom rushed to the theater to go see it. I feel like where I missed the boat with this, like maybe I'm going to blame it just on, you know, kind of the pop culture-ness of it. That whole ending, like I feel everyone knows, like you've seen that ending, whether it's parodied in a movie or... (laughs) Scary Movie 5, which we watched (laughs) recently, in which Charlie Sheen and Lindsay Lohan play the roles of Katie and Mika. (laughs) <laughs> yeah well they, exactly and like i just feel like you know i i've i just knew about it like there's clips on youtube and like people just really do i you know i don't deny people love this movie it's like a rabid fan base for it but i mean it just you know it, it didn't didn't hit i think like it should like i said i'm, pro- I'm probably just jaded i'm I've watched a Serbian film too many times. Oh God! It's just I think like I totally agree about the f- how it's the same formula. The one place I disagree with is just I find my biggest issue with this. Sh- 
um, movie is I found it really repetitive. And I think that's just related to like the rhythms of like the day, like they get up, they do this in the daytime. It's like the same kind of thing. Then they go to bed and it's like that footage. And it, it just felt like it was done multiple times. Whereas Blair Witch Project in the grand scheme of things is the same formula, but they're like moving around the woods and they're like seeing different like settings and stuff like that. And I think that's the, you know, living every day, every minute in the house kind of thing is just like, no. Yeah. And that's interesting because the, the rhythm works for me in... In actually kind of a powerful way, like every time, because, you know, you have your daytime shots where they're reacting to whatever happened the night before, which ratchets up over the course of the movie. And and then the nighttime shots, every time it says day number, whatever, October, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. I, I get a little prickle up my spine because I'm like, <laughs> something fucking weird is about to happen. And it's not going to be overtly weird. It's not going to be like the demon and in insidious, like poking out from behind somebody, but it's just going to be something that's going to just unsettle me and make me worried about every fucking little noise that I hear in my house. <laughs> even the even the trope of like the video speeding up and then stopping again. I'm always like, yeah. oh God, it's it stopped fast forwarding. What's gonna happen now? <laughs> yeah, Shit. yeah, that's Fuck. true. <laughs> like it it I I a hundred percent understand what you're saying about it not working for you, but I'm just on the opposite end of the scale where I'm like, oh my God, it, it just it freaks me out. <laughs> Do you like really rigid routines? Mm, yes and no. Okay, I was going to say, I feel like you hesitate like that. <laughs> you, and that might, that could be it. Like, Welcome that's in, a very, like, uh, lie thing. on Exilia's couch. <laughs> we psychoanalyze. Anyways, yeah, I'll stop doing that. <laughs> How does paranormal activity make you feel? <laughs> How does it make Tell you Tell me about your childhood, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, what is your deepest trauma? <laughs> Well, every night my mom would get up and stand next to my bed. <laughs> oh, wait, I understand why this works. Now. <laughs> now, I will say for kind of the effectiveness on this film, like, I don't know how you guys watched it. So we watched, <laughs> as I as I sit here and shit on paranormal activity, <laughs> we we also know that, you know, if it is on Blu-ray, I must buy it. He already it. owned the box set. So I own the, <laughs> like, six-movie box set. Wait, wait, how how long had you owned this without watching any of them? I, I think time. I bought them, like, a year and a half ago. <laughs> wow. Because this box set has up until the the one that's called, like, the Ghost Realm or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So I, I bought it. It was, like, 20 bucks or something fan and i was like sure why not so it's been sitting here and i mean i purposely didn't watch it because i was like there's no way there's no way in the length of this podcast that we're not gonna talk about paranormal activity (laughs) and i knew i was like i've never seen it so i'll wait and i'll uh was it a good deal i mean maybe i don't want to get into it till i'll talk about if it was a good purchase (laughs) when we get into the second film we've only seen two i I I apologize (laughs) i apologize for asking about finances that was very rude uh (laughs) when we when we talk about number two i'll i'll discuss whether you know it's a cliffhanger we'll we'll play we'll play the budget game we'll play rowan's budget game (laughs) yeah Yeah, there you go there you go (laughs) what was rowan's budget for the box set and what did it actually cost (laughs) Um, How many days was he in the doghouse after he bought this? <laughs> you think I can keep track of them? No. <laughs> That's true. He doesn't tell you about most of it, I'm sure. I'm just like, I'll go to the mailbox like three times a week and it's just like, you, you just have to measure the wall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you see these things sit next to me? That, that's essentially how it goes. <laughs> So I'm interested, Mike. On I'm interested on on your watch because you you said that you were you were waiting. I, I want to hear more about this. You were waiting for something to happen. How how did the rest of the film make you feel? Come sit on Rowan's coach. Oh, I'm here. We go. <laughs> I'm putting my feet up, man. Okay, <laughs> no. Um. Well. Okay. I I think the problem was that I had sort of built myself up with it and not just i had built myself up i feel like everybody built me up to it a bit Mm -hmm. because a lot of people i know you know again had similar experience like they were terrified by it and you know this is people that are seasoned you know movie fans and like love horror i felt like i both understand uh like what patrick was saying with the like kind of subtle things happening every day to like disrupt the routine and stuff that is not, again, like this kind of obvious 
jump scare bullshit, which is nice. But I also feel like I like similar to what Ro was saying, like waiting for him to get pulled up into the attic or whatever. So I had this like weird tension and I I feel like while I was watching it, it was unresolved. And I'm only now since having watched it and thinking about it and stuff like that over the last couple days, uh, realizing that I probably want to give it another watch because I feel like I was just like Blair Witch in a house, (laughs) you know, (laughs) except the ending was really cool. But then I kept thinking about it. And like, like I said, I was thinking about that, the the little scenes where she's standing over the bed and stuff and the speed up and then it stops. And, you know, you're, I was constantly watching the ticker of the time. (laughs) Like that was, it was so weird. I wasn't even paying attention to like the rest of the frame for a lot of this movie. And that actually might also be a problem. Problem. I was watching that time ticker like for I'd say a good 30% of the runtime of this movie. You know what? Like I guess while I was sort of disappointed with the pacing, I also realized that that's on me and I kind of want to go back and rewatch it. So this is good. The fact that I want to go back and like who is this soak person? it up again. <laughs> who is this person we're listening to? <laughs> but also I fucking hated the characters, so I might not. <laughs> and that that was that was one of my big issues with the movie was Okay, so like yeah, Mika is like very annoying. Shitty. Yeah. He like okay, not both of them. She was fine, but like he just really got under my skin. Yeah. He was just like that dude, you know? <laughs> He's a dude. Well, and that's one Capital of the, D. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I feel works really well about it is they both feel so natural. They feel like real people. To a degree where he seems so annoying the way a real person would. But also, I was like, I I kept kind of checking myself and going, I might be doing the same thing if I was in this scenario. Like, I might be trying to respond to it with humor and be like, oh, there's no demon, you know? (laughs) Yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, it's just the, it's just the wind, babe, you know? And and for, for my own, like, self-protection, I think, more than anything, because I would not want there to be a demon in my house. So I'd want to make jokes about it until I was like, oh, fuck, there's definitely a demon in the house, you know? (laughs) Yeah, and every note I made about, you know, finding one or both of them to be an annoying fucker, I always wrote, like, you know, I know it's supposed to be naturalistic. <laughs> like, I always countered that when I was making my notes with, like, I understand that, like, there is a point to this. There's there's a reason why they're not, you know, giving them uh, character names. All I was kind of thinking with Nika and whatever her name. Katie. Katie. I, my easiest name to remember ever. The whitest white girl name of all time. It's literally two syllables. <laughs> yeah. Um. See, I was... That was the one thing I was impressed with, kind of like you, Patrick. Like, especially I knew this was, like, kind of first time acting or, like, very new to acting. And, like, I think I read the guy that played Mika was, like... He was like a psychology student or oh, something. Wow. Huh. I don't think either of them were really in that field. Well, those are their names in real life, too. You know that. Yeah. Right? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Interesting. And that's yeah. why I sort of got irritated with you going, I don't think it's pronounced that way. And I'm like, it's his name. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, like, I assume he pronounces it. That's that that not the way you life. pronounce it. <laughs> I'm not saying that he's pronouncing it wrong for him. I'm just like, I've never heard it that way. Dude, what if he actually pronounced it Micah in real life and he was like, okay, for the movie. You can use my name, but just say it Mika. Just to yeah. create that little bit just, of distance. Exactly. I always wanted to be called Mika. <laughs> <laughs> He's living his truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. I feel like we're total opposites, Patrick and I. <laughs> because I totally get how they seem realistic, and that's what I do don't like at all it felt like i was watching this like okay so probably the first 20 to 30 minutes felt like i was watching the beginning of this really awkward porn with like weird (laughs) awkward preamble with two people that have zero like fucking charisma or zero like chemistry Chemistry. yeah and that's what i felt like (laughs) that i mean that makes sense like i i i understand fully every criticism you've leveled at this movie, (laughs) I just disagree with it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it all makes sense to me. I'm just yeah. not my We're experience just, with it. Yeah. Our perspectives are like polar opposite. <laughs> yeah. Which is cool. But it's the That's difference fine. between a yeah. like subjective yeah, no, exactly. viewing of a movie. Am I, right? am I, no, I think it's interesting. Am I kicked out of your kitchen now? No, of course <laughs> no. I, I think that I just I think it's interesting. She'll just fast forward through your <laughs> I'll be like, Duh. okay, he oh. stopped. <laughs> well, I mean, good luck with Chris and Steven. <laughs> I was gonna say now, as much as I was shitting on it, like on this entire thing, I did want to give it credit because as I was like reading about it, I I saw that they literally made this in seven days, mm-hmm. which I was like, that's actually like pretty impressive that they just you know seven days you're done. So you know, I I felt that uh, you had to give oh them. Oh my god, all the night scenes there was like weeks worth of them. Oh, oh my god, now I'm just thinking of like having to do all that shit in like two nights. <laughs> they had to pile oh. them in. Well, and what's wild too is that there are multiple endings to this movie. Have you have you all looked that up at all? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. So, no. so I was what? gonna say I feel I feel this could really alter someone's viewing of 100%. it. A hundred percent. Because they, they give totally different feels to the movie. Yeah, right? I watched them for the first time today and um I'll just say they picked the right one. <laughs> really? I thought they picked the wrong <laughs> Me one. Too. Oh really? Oh, Me okay. Too. Which one which no, one did you I all wish favor? I had known about this? I would have um, watched them too. I have no opinion now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We have to set this up for Mike. We have to explain it to Mike because the the other two are wild by any now, Oh, we've only seen one other one. Oh, you we only saw seen one, one other one. Okay, so Patrick, you, you guys just you... well, well you you describe the one you've seen and then I'll describe the one I've seen because there are, there are three total including the one that we've actually all seen in the the theatrical release. So Mike saw the theatrical release. So the, the other one we saw was um she watches Mika, Mika whatever. Mika. Mika. Now, I thought one of the interesting decisions was she doesn't actually ever go to his side of the bed. Yeah. That was uh Something they decide not to do in the other ending. She only stays on her side of the bed. The main thing is when he goes down, there's the scuffle. She comes back up covered in blood with a knife and basically sits down on the floor and, you know, does the evil dead cradle and just does that for like what a day 24 (laughs) hours yeah uh her phone rings you hear like her answering machine it's light Uh, outside it's light outside someone's leaving a message it's dark outside again yeah it's dark outside again her friend stops by looking for can't you know no one's responding she discovers him obviously dead in the kitchen or somewhere downstairs screams leaves and then the next knock is police police are coming searching they find the dead body well and she's still she's still rocking though yeah she does, yeah she, like no yeah. no reaction yeah. to any of this going on yeah. she's catatonic yeah uh so the cops come up uh they see her uh, and they you know they kind of call out like she has a weapon she kind of lunges towards them saying like Where's Mika? Kind of just in a you know trauma induced, you know psychosis. Psychosis. Yeah, she kind of like seems to snap back to herself for a minute. Yeah, and it's like Mika. And then you hear like a thud from presumably the demon, and then the cop, unstartled, fires his gun and shoots her and kills her. Oh, and that's the ending we saw. And you prefer that one. I liked it I better. Liked it better. I oh, liked it better. Weird. I I'm not an advocate of police okay, violence. How, but, that well, sounds no. like it would have been like at least ten minutes long. It was longer. It was sure. it is longer. I think it was like six or seven minutes yeah. longer. Okay. Yeah. I, I just I kinda liked it. I just I thought uh I didn't like the face. The face itself was cool, but I just feel like because I've only seen this movie now, it's been done in so many other things. Do you mean like her like sort of demon face as she lunges yeah. toward it, uh, toward the camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I could take or leave that. I almost don't even want that because there's so little visual effects up up until that point that I'm like, okay, don't I don't mm-hmm. want to CG demon face at this point in the movie. But I mean, it yeah. still makes me go, ah! when I see it, you know? <laughs> but I did not like that police shooting ending. I was like... 
this is just this just feels cruel. It feels anticlimactic and it feels cruel at this point in the movie just to have police shoot her dead and that's and that's it. You know, I'm a sick puppy. That <laughs> I mean, yeah, Serbian film fan over here. I mean, I guess it makes sense. But no, the the Say other no version, more. the other version that I saw was, I mean, basically this one's pretty simple. Actually, I mean, she goes downstairs, scuffle, screaming, blah blah blah, clomp 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 up the stairs. She comes up, comes right up to the camera, has the knife in her hand, and then just slits her throat in front of the camera, and that's the end. That would have been the best one for me. Oh really? my god! Yeah. Huh. I, I, I love the original ending. When I watched the other two, I was like, no, nope, no, nope, not doing it for me. I didn't like the police one, but I liked it better than the other one. Hmm. The, the the theatrical one just gave me a vibe. And I mean, I guess appropriately enough, I was going to say it gave me a vibe. Of those 2000 like jump scare YouTube yes. videos that all the kids raved about where you just watch something monotonous and then... It's like, ah! Someone would just like <laughs> scream into the camera. I'd be like the ring girl yeah. or something. Yeah. That was like very, like 2000. Year 2000. Yeah. And that's the vibe I got yeah. from that ending. But to me, it works because it's been low key for so long. And then you just get this shot of horrifying adrenaline for like 30 seconds. And then they just literally turn the lights off on you. I remember sitting in the theater, again, basically alone with my friend. And to me, it felt like an absolute eternity from that final shot to whenever the credits started to roll. I was just, I felt like I was locked in the theater with the demon. I felt like something was going to attack me and it was upsetting. <laughs> yeah. And now I, I did like that choice because we, we noticed that it's like it, it shut. Cause even on like, you know, on the Blu-ray, like it shuts off and then we, I'm kind of like, is like the <laughs> Blu-ray thing. broken or something? Cause it's just a black screen. I thought there's nothing. I thought for sure someone was going to pop out and scream, but then it was just like directed by. <laughs> yeah. No, actually well, I, I don't think it even has a directed by credit. I think it just goes to like, Legal. Oh, like all those names. Yeah, it there are very minimal like a... credits. It, it really kind yeah. of like commits to the bit of this is a real thing the, and these the are real. Yeah, like saw... the police found the body whenever yeah. or whatever it was. Yeah, so. Which is another like Blair Witchy thing about it. Yeah. I just only remember See, that, like oh. the thousand names scrolling down that like paid for it. Oh, okay. Maybe we saw a different version. I watched it on Hulu. So it might it might actually be a different version, but the credits were like... I feel like less than 15 seconds when I watched it. Yeah. I don't remember much credits either. I watched it on Netflix. Oh, we watched it on Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, and I did read, I think, certain edition. It must be the one I've got. Like, when they made the original short, they did a thing that if you donated money, that you would get your names in the credits. Mm. So, like, at the end of ours, there's literally, like, hundreds of yeah. people. Wow. And it just, like, scrolls super it's quick. Super you can't fast. see the names. Yeah. Oh. I never understand the point of that if you can't actually see the names. <laughs> yeah. It's true. I guess say you didn't waste your money. Pause it. Like, yeah. Until you find your name. Yeah. So, I mean, we've we've teased the question. Uh, so let's give it a full out answer of, is it unsettling? And I feel like this is where we all gain up on Patrick. <laughs> pa- Patrick's never coming back, ever. <laughs> no, actually, I'm going to leave right now. <laughs> Enjoy your discussion of paranormal you, activity oh, too, motherfuckers. <laughs> but yeah, so did we find it unsettling? How about you, Mike? Mostly when I was watching it, no. And then that that last like jolt at the end, I was like, oh, okay, this is it's giving me feelings. And then after that, I was like, because I did feelings. take a break between the two viewings, and even then, and then I was thinking about, it, I was like, nope, Blair Witch in a house. So then I changed my mind that no. And I do think that while there were a few moments, I just, I feel like I was ruined. I just, for whatever reason, the found footage just never does it for me. Except Blair Witch. I don't know why. But I feel like if I rewatch, and I haven't watched Blair, Blair Witch forever. So I don't, I don't know that that would have any effect on me. But I just, I kind of went back and forth and I'm thinking probably no. No. Honestly. Now I say that and I might wake up in the middle of the night next week and have been having nightmares about it all night, but... My response is quick. Just no. I didn't. I didn't find this one unsettling whatsoever. No, me either. Let's go to you, Patrick. You're <laughs> you're a better one. I mean, I yeah. I mean, obviously, I yeah. already said it unsettled me at length. And I mean, I guess I'll, I'll I'll briefly break down why I think it works because I still don't know 
it's still hard for me to figure out why, because obviously there have been a lot of movies like this. Um, for me, I think it's partly because the performances are very naturalistic, where it feels like it has that Blair Witch effect for me of like, I'm watching something I'm not supposed to be seeing. Like, this is just someone's video of a potentially real thing, and I maybe shouldn't be watching this. Um, and also, I think the limited perspective really helps it because the camera is so often just in that one place by the bed. And I was thinking about this when I watched the second one, because we'll get into it, obviously, but the second one does not do it for me like the first one does. And I was like, I was just going, why is that? These two movies are not that different. But I think it benefits a lot from that very fixed perspective where a lot of the time noises are going on in the house, things are happening like sort of out of camera fr camera frame or entirely out of camera frame. And it's entirely left to your imagination. And that does a lot for me, especially just like in the sense of being in my own house. Like I remember living, I lived in a, a, a duplex at the time this came out. I was upstairs and I would wake up at night all the fucking time and hear sounds that sounded like something coming up the stairs. And I would go, it's the demon. I would be awake for hours sometimes convincing myself that that fucking demon was coming after me which is which is the dumbest thing in the world you know but it it works you know this movie tells you yes that noise you're hearing is something to be terrified of and that and it still worked for me this time around well because they just use thumps right it's like yeah. yeah you always hear fucking thumps even when like i'm here in this fucking apartment living by myself and i'll hear thumps in the middle of the night mm -hmm. and it's like footsteps like the people upstairs and it convinces you that, like, that's not just some person, like, walking to go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's something... It's a demon. Yeah. Far more malevolent, right? Well, and it also... Go ahead, Exilia. No, you go ahead. Well, I, I was going to say, it also makes what I think is a really brilliant stroke of never showing you shit about that demon. You don't see mm -hmm. it. You never see it. It's entirely left up to your imagination and... I love that. It fucks me up even more because you don't see it. And it, it reminds me of Blair Witch because one of the reasons Blair Witch succeeds is you never see the fucking witch. You never see anything. And that's by mistake. They had somebody <laughs> in a fucking suit. I don't know. What? I don't know if you all have read this, but like the scene, I don't know. Do you remember the scene where they're in the tent? They hear noises like someone's yeah. shaking their tent. They all run out of the tent. They had somebody in a, a costume of some sort who was supposed to be seen outside the tent. <laughs> and whoever was operating the camera failed to get that person on film. <laughs> oh my God. It would be a different movie. You don't want to see the Blair Witch. It's better no. because you don't, you know? And and this movie, I think, smartly, didn't even have any intention to show it to us in the first place. Yeah, even, even when I was, you know, going, you know, in my head and kind of like shitting on it a little bit while I was watching it, um, it did... It, it, to its benefit, make me think of one of my favorite movies of all time, which does something similar, which is The Haunting, mm. the original like Shirley Jackson adaptation, not the you know new Netflix one, but mm. like that you know it's the same thing. It's like they don't show anything. You hear a bunch of noises, and it's terrifying. And you know, like that's that's brilliant, especially when you're working on a limited budget. It's like it's it's two birds with one stone. You don't have to pay any money for fucking bullshit prosthetics or. CG and it scares the shit out of people. Yeah. So. Well, and you and you and you have to be smart about it. You have to know what you're doing. But yeah, if you mm -hmm. know what you're doing, it works. I do. Oh, so I didn't like how it was presented in this movie, but I do really agree with like the imagination piece actually making it like more interesting because that's something like when you're reading a book, like it's all just in your imagination, and that's not something that's translated easily into like visual media basically like tv or movies so i do like the concept of that <laughs> horror hounds do you guys like horror music i like horror music exilia likes horror music we know mike definitely loves horror music so if you love horror music like we do uh join us on spotify uh we have a playlist up called the it slays podcast horrific playlist we have some of our favorite tasty jams from some of our favorite horror movies, uh, and we're always consistently adding to the list. And let us know. You can uh, email us or Facebook or Instagram us and let us know if there's anything we should add to the playlist. So I think it's time uh, 
we get to raid in this bad boy because we still have a whole nother one to talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so if you are new to the program, our rating system is nay, okay, yay, or slay. And we will start with Patrick. He is the guest <laughs> of honor. Oh, yeah. So, so I can really shock you all with my rating. Uh, I'm also very interested in what you'd give it for your guys' rating system on your podcast. Oh. The uh, screw it, cue it, or view it. Yeah. I I, I want to know both rating systems. Okay, well, I mean, again, prepare your, like, brace yourselves. But I would give it both <laughs> a slay and a view it. Maybe even a I view s- it with prejudice. Oh, jeez. I just, that you is... know, I mean, as I said, like, this, this worked really well for me the first time. It's, it. It scared me. I don't. I don't necessarily want to say it's one of the scariest movies I've ever seen, but I want to say it has scared me more than most movies I've seen. And the second time around, it still really worked for me. So yeah, got to go with a slay and a uh, view it. <laughs> That's awesome. I I feel happy that it like scares you. I'm like at least it scared somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah at length <laughs> uh how about you mike um i'll give it an okay i've been warming up to it since watching it but i there has not been enough time honestly like <laughs> i i've moved i have miraculously moved from i will i wrote that note blair witch in a fucking house <laughs> <laughs> to i i i'm appreciating it a bit more but it's still i'm not there i'm not there that's all and, right. I, and I actually do want to watch more in the series, so we'll see what happens. I don't know if that's going to like affect me negatively towards this or positively. I don't know. We'll you'll have to find out. Next time we do a double feature on uh well, You're going to turn it into four. a quintuple feature then. <laughs> quintuple, <laughs> so that's the right. Whole series. Pull a Patrick. <laughs> uh, how about you, Exilia? I'm sadly going to give this a nay. I don't want to go as far as saying as I hated this movie, <laughs> but I strongly disliked it. I'll talk more about viewing again, but um, yeah, no, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think in the words of cultural icon Randy Jackson, it's a no for me, dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely a nay for me i w- i was not i i just you know what it is i don't think it lived to the hype for me no. everyone sw- i remember telling people i act like this is forever ago but i i, re- I have said to people i'm like oh yeah on the podcast we're doing like paranormal activity and like oh d- people have been asking us for to review it for like a long time when we first ever. started the podcast oh, wow. People were messaging us because uh, we had asked, like, what kind of movies, like, what do you want us to do? And this was always one that everyone wrote in. It was like, you got to do Paranormal Activity. Wow. And just this buildup of it. And everyone I talked to, that was like, oh, have you watched it yet? And I'm like, no. And they're like, oh, you're like, we can't wait. It's like, <laughs> you're going to love it. And guess what? No, I didn't love it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Zillia said my part. We were in the same room, so... We, uh, I think we had the same feeling about it. Uh, so now I did, uh, on Instagram ask what you guys thought about it. And I got to pop it open because I'm slow on that. But we did have someone write us. Uh, her handle is Creepy Girl. And this isn't a three to one anymore. I think it's three to two. I think Patrick has gained a friend. Yes. I mean, okay, and listen, Mike gave it an okay, which is like... I gave it an okay, yeah. 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 So, uh, Creepy I, Girl literally just... There. <laughs> creepy Girl just literally sent an entire message full of hearts. <laughs> so, I'm going to say that she probably gives this a slay. Wait, wait, wait what color? Red. Uh, okay, yes. okay, okay. Yeah, no black ones. Okay. But uh, red, so that's love. I'm sure that's love. I, I, would, I would almost submit that that sways it to a 3-2 majority. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> What's, but what, like, literally how many hearts is it? We need to, like, parse this now. It's like five or six. Oh, that's a lot of hearts. Okay. That's a lot of hearts. I'd send one heart. <laughs> Half a heart. You're not an emoji spammer, clearly. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> so, now it is time to get into the budget game. Uh, And, I mean... 
if you're listening, you probably know what goes on. I know how much it costs and it made. And then everyone guesses, and the winner for this one, I don't know, is going to win their car keys off the floor or something. I don't know. What? You get the house. You get to live in the house with the (laughs) demon and hang out. Ooh, I'm going to make the worst guesses I can. (laughs) So we will start with the cost. Now, I was more concerned with Patrick because I was like, I know he, you know, looks into these kind of things. So I do have the price of the original cost and then the post-production cost basically after this movie was picked up onto a major. Right, because they spent a shitload of money on it and then they realized, oh, we shouldn't fuck with this. Yeah. So, uh, and I would say... From the numbers, I'd say this is probably what they ended up keeping in it. Because I wouldn't say it's a wild number. But, uh, yeah, we'll start with cost. Uh, We'll start with Exilia and her hatred for this film. I said I didn't hate it. Um, (laughs) Her non-hatred. Yeah, $415,000. $415,000. Mike, we'll go with you. 75K. 75K. How about you, Patrick? 200 grand. I'll say 200 grand. 200 grand. What am I going to do here? You know what? I'm going to kind of split it. I'm going to give Patrick the win and then an honorable mention to Mike for a pre-production win. Oh, okay, okay. So when they made the film, it was $15,000. That's how much they made it for. That's nothing. Shit. Uh, And then added with uh, post-production, $250,000 is what boxofficemojo.com says. Hmm. I was going to say, I guess a kind of mention, you know, we said that this got picked up after it kind of showed in like... Some little festivals. Uh, Patrick mentioned that they you, they originally when they bought it, the uh, the whole thing was we want the movie and the idea and we're gonna totally redo it. I guess the the original idea was bigger budget. We're gonna reshoot it with like name people. And oh, right, yeah. when they started that process, they were like it just. Uh, it didn't work. And they actually, uh, Oren had a good scam where his agreement he signed, they had to give him one viewing of a full theater of the original film where him and the executives would attend also. And uh, I saw an interview with him and he, so he said originally the executives were laughing because people left the theater throughout the movie and they just kind of were whispering to him and they, you know they're like we're gonna remake this and then when they left the theater and talked to the people people were so disturbed by the movie they were leaving the theater at the showing and that convinced them to not touch the film other than uh, a couple post-production just effects and stuff yeah like the demon face at the end yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, I want to say this is a movie that does benefit from like seeing it in a theater and maybe just like kind of that presentational thing of like watching it in the dark, you know? Yeah. I And, it, and it's weird because it's not, it doesn't look beautiful. It looks like shit most of the time. <laughs> it's not like something you would necessarily be like, oh, this is cinema. You need to see it on a big screen. <laughs> but I, I think it benefits from but that. But maybe it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. All right, well, let's talk about what it made. And I'll give you a hint. It only made a little bit more. (laughs) Uh, Let's start with Patrick this time. How much did this film make? Um, I mean, this is famously, I think, one of the most profitable films of all time. I'm going to say 300 million. 300 million. Mike. Like 150 mil? 150 I don't know why I'm like undershooting it so much, but here we are. And how about you, Exilia? I think 297 million. Oh, (laughs) undercut. The undercut. (laughs) What she meant was 300 million and one. (laughs) Mike. I think Mike is going to be the closest. So 195 million okay. is how much it made. Okay. It made a little over that. Uh, but I mean, still, yeah, I, I believe you're right, Patrick. This is like one of the most profitable movies of all time. I mean, definitely profitable enough. We got a sequel. So fucking 19 of them. 
I was gonna say, didn't one just come yeah. out? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, they're still doing Literally. these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think one came out. We're recording this. It's Friday, October twelfth, and I think I it, think it's November. Or wait, yeah, I November. Mean, I'm stuck in spooky season. <laughs> November twelfth, and I think the new one dropped like yesterday or the day before. I know it's on Prime. Yeah. <laughs> Just a reminder to follow us on all of our social media at It Slays Podcast. We're on Twitter. Facebook, Instagram, soon to be on Tumblr. Uh, of course, we're on Spotify and iTunes. And if you're adding us on iTunes, don't forget to leave us an iTunes review. Uh, it doesn't even need to be five star. We appreciate five star. But uh, the most important part is we want to hear from you. So uh, write us a uh, text review in the iTunes app and we will make sure to give you a shout out on the podcast uh every review helps as it bumps us up in the search engine and you know that's what it's all about back to the podcast (laughs) saying that we will get into uh the trailer for the paranormal 2 and we will uh come back to Talk about another one. Okay, so this is the freakiest thing that happened to me last night. This is the door closing by itself. Daddy, there's obviously something in that house. Please, it's enough. There's something really messed up. Oh my god! There's no milagroso that tenga pato. Paranormal Activity 2. Rated all to see it first. Demand it at ParanormalMovie.com. We are back. You guys were listening to the trailer, and uh, we were talking about, what, like, side cast, like, 8 million now. Uh, we're just going to do, like, a folk art side cast. Yeah. Expect that never, because we've never done one. Someday we're going to... The OC. Some, the That's OC will be the only yeah. side cast we ever do someday. Patreon content. We, Patreon, yeah. <laughs> Patrick's really going to have our Patreon whipped in the shade yeah. here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Paranormal Activity 2, we've uh, jumped to 2010. Uh, directed by Todd Williams with 1D, not 2. Uh, and I was going to say only real notable film he did sell, the Stephen King adaptation. Like with Jennifer Lopez? No, no oh, I was going to say not to be confused oh, with uh, the Tarsim oh, Singh, The uh, Cell, how dare you? <laughs> no, this had uh, Samuel Jackson and Cusack in it, so I actually have never seen it. So You say Cusack like there's not two of them. <laughs> I know. Oh, so the superior Cusack man. would be Joan, but anyway, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to start that argument. <laughs> One thing I think we have to start off with right out of the gate is possible director that they tried to get for this. I'm waiting for Mike's reaction to this because I know Mike's love for this director. (laughs) Brian De Palma. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Was one of the people they approached for it. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. uh, I have so many things to unpack here. Do you not like Brian De Palma? No, I love him. Oh, okay. 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 I I just do not. I, (laughs) I, I really I, just, I really like, thought I, I might have to I rage quit for a minute worlds. there. <laughs> like it's it's just a Venn diagram that does not overlap to me. <laughs> no, I thought Rowan, I thought you were gonna bring up that the director of like I think it's Saw Five or Six was supposed to direct this initially, and then I think somebody exercised his claws to go direct Saw whatever it was. Yeah, I forgot I, about I, Brian I did De Palma. See that. That would have been weird. Yeah, that would have been super weird. And maybe Didn't great. Did do cursing? No, that's... um. No. Wasn't that Friedkin? <sighs> yeah, that was Friedkin. Oh, yeah, yeah William Friedkin. Friedkin. Yeah. yeah. No, De- Fun fact, I have never seen a Brian De Palma movie. What? A guy that owns this... You haven't seen Carrie? Movie. Oh, he did do Carrie. Yeah. I was going to say, we Wait, did, we we saw did Carrie. one Wait, of his We saw movies. Carrie. I love Carrie. I think it's because I always think I was going to say, uh, the amount of movies we've watched together, I have showed you, I'm sure, at least five. So. I've, like, I've never seen Rosemary's Baby. Have you seen bo- Body I, that's Double? That's because that's Roman Plants. Yeah, never that. seen Body Double. Oh, wait, there you go. I don't know. <laughs> Not everyone Dress to Kill. watching every horror movie I've on I've never Netflix. seen Dress to Kill. <laughs> Mission Impossible. <laughs> 
Tom Cruise. Yeah, Mission, Mission Impossible, the first one, the best. Oh, one. there you go. I guess I've, I guess I've seen. Yeah. Is that like that makes me like a loser of the Brian De Palma <laughs> fan club? Mm-hmm. Like, I yeah. wouldn't really <laughs> say you're part of the fan club. Well, I but... love Mission Impossible, guys. Yeah, that's like. Uh, yeah, I love David Fincher. A uh, big fan of Curious Case of Benjamin Button. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, for this one, let me get uh, the trusty letterbox up, and we will uh, go into the bio for Paranormal Activity 2. In 2009, you demanded it. (laughs) Nothing can prepare you for what's next. Days after welcoming a newborn baby, Dan and Christy Ray return home one day to find their house ransacked with seemingly no explanation. Their fear forces them to put in security cameras, which begin to capture strange activity around the house. So let's talk about first experiences. And let's start with you, Mike. What is your... experience with this Uh, girl believe it or not (laughs) i hadn't seen the first one so i also hadn't (laughs) seen the second one which i know is not always the case i will admit that but in this case it is the case (laughs) murder was the case (laughs) now i i feel yet again me and Exilia might as well go because I want Patrick to be able to fill yeah, in yeah. and ma- make our listeners that love paranormal activity like happy. I, I'm sure you've seen this, have you not? Oh no, I we haven't seen. I it, did so. no, I didn't watch this movie. Oh my goodness! No, I'm kidding. I watched the movie. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, I I was to say we didn't. We've never seen it. We never saw the first one. We're way too hipster. Collectors of outsider art just aren't into this. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, you see that alien on the wall behind <laughs> X, so... Rowan's, Rowan's birth dad painted that. This is true. We'll we'll post a picture on its slaves. I think we did already. No, on, I post um, on my Instagram. I don't... I can't keep track of all these things. Anyway, Patrick... How do you not know my Instagram page? <laughs> by memory. Patrick, your first experiences with Paranormal Activity 2. Um... I am pretty, I see, I, I don't have a strong memory of it. I, I'm pretty sure I watched it on, I want to say Blu-ray to be cool, no, okay. but I'm pretty sure I probably just watched it on fucking DVD, like a fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. And that's really is all there I like have a, to say Is there a boot it? button on Zoom? Can I just boot you out or? <laughs> it wasn't even 720p. <laughs> <laughs> I watched a YouTube rip of it. Yeah. <laughs> let's you know get into it our favorite scene we know it's coming exilia let's start with you this time okay this was my favorite scene and also the scene i actually thought was scary when they're downstairs in the basement and they have like the night vision on and they're like fucking like spinning and i have no idea what's going on and i hate basements already nothing good has ever happened in a basement yeah i actually thought that was scary when he's like chasing trying to f- get the little boy with like all the frantic camera and work. it's like yeah. green kind of Blair Witch vibes I don't know when when I'm disoriented that scares me I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Patrick you sh- we should be somewhat happy it seems like there's a little happier tone in Exilia's <laughs> voice <laughs> pep, pep in my step <laughs> pep in your step for this uh Mike how about you um Honestly, probably when um the daughter whose name escapes me right now Allie. is Allie looking something? after the youngster and gets locked out of the house. I don't know why I found that so terrifying. Probably because when I was a teenager, I would go to parties and stuff and go out really late and would occasionally lose my keys and be locked out of my house and not want to knock on anybody's window to come let me in because I didn't want them to you know, see that I had been drinking. So <laughs> I would go out and like literally hang out in my backyard, which was really creepy because it was next to like a walking trail. And I just, for whatever reason, like someone getting locked out of their house at night with no phone or, you know, keys or like she, you know, I feel like she probably wasn't wearing much either because, you know, she was like hanging out in her house. So that, that, I don't know why that, that scene actually really did creep me out. So that kind of sticks in my mind as like my favorite. And you know, a baby alone with like, you know, nobody to look a after A demon. It. Yeah. No, a baby and a demon. Just also the demon. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Minor detail. Yeah. 
How about you, Patrick? It's it's honestly really hard to come up with one because there weren't a lot of scenes I liked in this movie. <gasps> I I think, and honestly, we'll get into it, but I had a really hard time with that whole sequence in the basement. And I think it reinforces the theory that Exelia and I are polar opposites, <laughs> except for our passion for outsider art. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, when it comes to movies, yeah, 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 yeah. But if I'm if I'm really forced to pick a favorite scene from this movie, I guess I want to say the one where like the kid kind of gets dragged up the side of the no! crib <laughs> by the invisible like presence of the demon. That was that. I don't know. It it had a nice little surreal feel to me. You know, defying gravity a little bit. Um, yeah, it was very like Nightmare on Elm Street one, like getting dragged yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, that's a yeah. good comparison. I, I literally with a lot. thankfully less bloody ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did. I did not want to see the toddler get murdered, but I was like, okay, a toddler no. getting dragged up the side of its crib by an unseen hand. That's I haven't seen that before. That's a, all right. Okay, I'll accept it. Yep. And I will say, I I was not certain. I I kind of thought they weren't going to, but I was not certain that the child was going to be unscathed. Mm. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this is going to be the type of movie that's going to get try to get scares by actually, you know, going all the way. So you know that also that that scene also did very much like kind of mm, <laughs> make me like grip my desk. Along those same lines, I also liked the scene where Allie is exploring the house towards the end of the movie and and peeks into the kid's room with the camera and sees the big like weird demon bite on the mom's leg and then like slowly opens the door and the kid's just there like, "Hey, what's <laughs> up?" you know. And it's yeah. it, it, it's 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 a weird like kind of tension burst because you're like, "Oh my god, what is she maybe done to the kid but the kid's just still in the crib like looking adorable and a little scared yeah and uh, yeah i was gonna say uh i really enjoyed the see the scenes i enjoyed the most it's kind of weird because nothing happens which i complained about for number one but was anything in the kid's room because of the mirror and i said to exilia i was like there's so much stuff I'm trying to pay attention to here. I'm looking at the crib and the baby when the baby's in the crib. I'm looking at the rocking chair. I'm then looking at the mirror because I am I was like, maybe we're going to see something in the mirror that we're not going to yeah. see in the room. Mm. Then you have the bathroom that's attached to the room. And the bathroom mirror. Which they and made the a big deal mirror. about at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. yeah. Right? And yeah. I've got to pay attention to the hallway. So for some reason, like I said, with this one, my brain just had so much fun that I'm like, I'm trying hard to focus on any of the characters that are in the rooms. But then I'm like, no, no, there's got to be shit going on elsewhere. elsewhere in this room. Yeah, they really overstuffed the shots when you think about it. <laughs> well, and that's a thing that I'll... It's a lot to pay attention to. Yeah, that's the thing that I'll kind of give this franchise a lot of credit for. I mean, both particularly in the first installment and in this one, but because of those static camera shots that stay static for such long periods of time, you're kind of playing where's Waldo in those shots sometimes where it's like, oh, there's that light in that corner. Wait, was that light there before? You know, and, and you start to feel what the characters are feeling where it's just this paranoia about... Yeah. Did that light turn on its own? Did that door open on its own? And there are obvious cues sometimes where a door obviously opens, yeah. but there are other times where you're just sitting there going, wait, what's changing? Did I miss something that changed? You know, it's, it's. Yeah. And your eyes were just like darting yeah. around everywhere. Yeah. That's yeah. like, we were watching, you know, when they kept showing the shot of like the staircase with like the pictures on the wall, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. those pictures got rearranged and we're like, is that like supposed to be there or is that a mess up is it a continuity error or yeah. is it actually deliberate yeah yeah <laughs> and i feel like they changed enough that it was deliberate because it would and it would be like simple things where like they were swapped two would be swapped but then eventually like one the two that were swapped would kind of swap one extra place over and then go back and it also seemed that the only ones the picture that was mostly getting swapped was of the parents in this one. Mm -hmm. I felt it was on purpose. I Who wish knows? we found out more about the parents. Now, I'm sure that probably comes with the other ones that I haven't seen, but I, I'd like to know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm interested <laughs> to know that 
how if they continue to connect yeah. really so i have seen i think five of the movies in this franchise i was not following the fucking continuity of them at all <laughs> like i i oh, okay. saw the second one but i did not i think it was it i mean because they came out three years apart i think by the time this one came out and i saw it i didn't remember shit about the first one and so like any connections yeah. to the first one didn't have any meaning to me I almost want to watch the other ones after this to kind of see how things connect yeah. because Katie continues to be a presence. Like she is, she has not really had a career other than being in these movies. <laughs> and I'm curious yeah. to see how that thread continues through. I think the third one like flashes back to when Katie was a child or something, but yeah, I, the continuity is an interesting thing. Yeah, well, and I was going to say, I kind of, I, I know me and Exilia, when we were watching it, we're, we're just kind of like the the continui- continuity in it was kind of like a gift and a curse thing. Because, you know, as Exilia had kind of said to me about this is happening before the first one and then runs into the first one but i mean you could tell when they made the first one they didn't think it was gonna be a series because with this one katie and them are like well aware of these like hauntings going on at the sister's place beforehand but then in this in the first one the guy's like why wouldn't you have told me but it's obvious that like this was happening at her sister's. He had been there. I'm assuming, he, like, he would have known because the guy, other guy, was talking to him about ghosts and stuff. So it doesn't really quite, I don't know, make sense, logical sense. Well, I, th- I think it clicks, though, because he, like, finds out about this for the first time when they're in the pool in this movie, right? Yeah, but so that's, that's the... Pr- prequel to the first one yeah. and in the first one yeah, oh i didn't think about the dates too the dates i wonder probably line up because no. the ending of this movie was the ending of no. the first one the ending of this movie was the beginning of the second no. movie no, or but backwards. there is a bit of a jump the in beginning. this movie from the beginning okay. like yeah. it goes from when the baby's very young to when it's like a year old this movie yeah. is a prequel yeah. and so you... a sequel to the first one yeah it's like what? it's it's Okay. That, oh, yeah. Because at the very end, it says that thing. Yeah. But so. Well, and at the very end, it's Katie that comes into their yeah. house all bloody yeah, already. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But what I'm saying is, like, it was occurring at their sister's house and not at Katie's house when they had the conversation in the pool because it was in the prequel. And then in the first one, when it's happening to Katie, Buddy's like, why didn't you tell me about this on our first date? Or like when we started moving in together, but he did already know he found it at the pool. Right. But they were yeah. already moved in together at that point. I mean, yeah, I don't but... want to defend Mika too much, but <laughs> no, but he said, why didn't you tell me like when they were arguing about it in the bedroom? So it's two totally, he did already know. Nah. Right. But they had already I don't moved, know. They were already like, moved he in together. He means in those point. years that they knew each other or whatever. Yeah, I see what they're, I see what they're talking about because because there's the jump in the beginning of time like of years, so because the baby's born and then the baby's like a toddler, right? Because there were things that yeah. happened to them when they were kids, and she didn't tell him yes. about yes. that early when they were dating, which honestly makes sense. Uh, but then they moved in together before weird shit started happening to Christy and her family. And then yeah. he finds yes. out through that conversation in the pool when they've already moved in together. But in the first one, the pool's not in it. Well, no. No. <laughs> You're just confusing me now, honestly. <laughs> it's okay. I see what I we're, I we're really like you're there working with like your fine tooth comb to like sort out every little like yeah. date in the plot threads of these movies and like weave them together into like a tapestry <laughs> and it's not gonna happen. Like just don't this, bother. The second one is before the first one. Not all of it is though. I, I, anyway, it doesn't matter. It, does, it, it doesn't, really doesn't. It doesn't matter. matter. It really doesn't matter. God love them. They tried to to line it up so that it made yeah. sense. I I appreciate it. I think that's the moral of the story. But uh, 
I was gonna say, the big thing I noticed, Paranormal Activity 2, we got some higher def cameras going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not so dark, a little lighter. You can see in these cameras. Uh, you know, it, it doesn't have that old school found footage feel anymore. Now it's just you hacked into some rich person's security camera mm -hmm. and are watching them all the time. Uh, and off the bat, the dad, super unlikable, entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I have like four lines, but you're, you're sick. Normally I'm all about tearing down the dude, but you're signaling him out. They're both pieces of shit. <laughs> the first thing that mother does when she comes home is hand her baby off. And she literally says, I'm not going to take care of that baby. I'm not going to change his diaper. Here you go. Nanny. Oh yeah. Their relationship. Who, by the way, they then treat as a maid and like does everything for I, them. I don't think it was the mom that said that. I think it was the stepsister. Hmm. She's the no, one I'm, recording. I mean, regardless, their relationship with Martine, the maid, yeah, is, is a bit explosive. Yeah, it's, it's problematic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah. yeah it's, it's trolling. I just said it was trolling, which is the 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 product of a few beers, but I meant troubling. <laughs> uh, there is a uh, many a uh, problematic things going on with this family. Yeah, like their artwork. <laughs> there was some very questionable artwork. Decidedly uh, not outsider artwork. <laughs> <laughs> And it was it was weird. Like I remember, like kind of the first shot, it, it, we're with the father in one of the rooms. It's like that huge picture of like a woman from Africa, and it's just it's really weird. Oh, I didn't notice. And that. then it's like these African masks beside it, and it's just like exactly what would be in like a rich white asshole's <laughs> space to show that he's cultured. And like at first at first I was kind of like what? Like I was confused. I didn't understand what I was processing. But then there's like more yeah. artwork throughout the house. There's like another shot somewhere else that there's also like weird like African art going on and I, yeah I was just like matching that up with how we're treating Martine is that her name yeah Martine I'm like I'm like yeah like we definitely know what these guys are about okay like Mika yeah, was... and I will say that that art that you're talking about I have house it for people that have had very similar stuff up on their <laughs> walls so it's it's very true to life <laughs> it's like it, it, it hit home. <laughs> We've been to a place before that their entire basement was just like indigenous artifacts. Mm. But it was just because they're like bought them. They're, they're like, yeah, it was very problematic. It's very problematic. <laughs> But I, think I mean, that's sort of the moral of the story with the moral this of the family story. in this movie. It's they're problematic. They, they like let, let me let me rhyme off the ways they're problematic. <laughs> we we know they like African art and they don't like sage in their house. <laughs> yeah. I I my note was before he lost his shit. Like literally when she was walking around the house, I was like, finally someone saged the place. Right, like, right. This, the, the most thing. basic thing. <laughs> I said the same thing. <laughs> I've never seen such an overreaction to Sage. <laughs> when he yeah. picks up the life. pillow and starts trying to fan <laughs> Sage out with the pillow. <laughs> oh my God. Now I'm going to, you know, I'm going to shock and awe and disgust Patrick. Oh. But far more enjoyable time with this <gasps> film. Yeah, same. Oh. Far more enjoyable. What? Interesting. I also liked it way better. I really, I... I really like this one. Wow. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't I don't get it. I the thing with the pool cleaner, I like really it thought was funny. was funny. I like just the, his obsession with his pool cleaner. <laughs> um also the first time in our paranormal activity watching and experiences, Exilia jumped in this movie. Hmm. Uh so well, that's embarrassing well, that's... for her, I guess. <laughs> Not so much. What me. did you jump at? I didn't even remember. What was it? Yeah, I'm very curious. Was it the basement? No, no. it wasn't the basement. I think it was uh I Oh think, when the door slammed? I think it's slammed? when the mom like gets like pulled. I think that's what it was. Because oh. it was like a loud thud and then she Oh, it was when she's like it's a really calm scene when she it's nighttime and she like pushes the light on in her baby's room and she's like, you know, it's a really calm, nice scene, and then she just gets a like friggin' like 
zipped away. Mm. So basically a recreation of the first one, but we hated it. <laughs> and now I did in the second. I just like how calm. I see, because the scene was so calming, I really let my guard down. And then it was just like, I, I forgot that she might get drug away. That's how calming mm. it was. Hmm. <laughs> interesting i was a big fan of the the stepdaughter yeah um, she was great we we only love... character in it that i didn't want to smack yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 pretty much uh some great iconic uh ramones and misfit posters mm. and yeah uh just generally someone that has some good musical taste <laughs> except on the on the way home today rowan asked me if I thought the Misfits were overrated, I might I might have had a discussion about the Misfits being a tad bit overrated. I mean, yeah, I, I think the Ramones and the Misfits are both a tad bit overrated, which doesn't make them You're less great necessarily, but like they're definitely overrated. We'll say that for I don't know something else. Patreon content, <laughs> <I feel. laughs> Patreon. <laughs> I'm going to invite Patrick, and we're just going to bands that you love that <laughs> we'll just drunkenly rag on <laughs> an hour i'd listen honestly <laughs> i'm looking at you cold play <laughs> i think i meant to say radiohead but oh <laughs> they are kind of similar <laughs> oh i have so many thoughts oh okay now the gloves are just coming off <laughs> just thrown just, on the floor. what were we talking about <laughs> <laughs> it's like your blood pressure is jumping now totally unwinding but yes so as i was saying far more enjoyable experience for me i was actually engaged with this one hmm. which then made me feel like a basic bitch well, because right. i was like i know this is probably like this is probably got a higher budget like this is where the studio is like all right let's this is this let's is the take- cash grab yeah. yeah, it's when the indie artist does their pop album. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I fall for it. I fall for it. I was just like, all right, I, I like it. You love the polish. I think it's just because I think more things happen quicker. Yeah. Or I found they did. And especially after seeing the first one, to me, it's no different than if I'm watching A Nightmare on Elm Street or... A Friday the 13th. It's like, all right, I've seen the first one. I get the idea. Let's just get to it. Like, I just want to get to shit going on. To me, after the first one, like, the tension's kind of gone anyway. Like, I know what I'm in for, for a paranormal activity now. I mean, yeah. And and that is, I think, the fatal flaw for me. Because this is... So, I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street, you know. I love the first one. The first one is one of my favorite fucking movies of all time. But obviously there's ample room to exploit and expand upon that concept and do more weird, fucked up dream murders. Sure, bring it on. That's my favorite thing about any Nightmare on Elm Street movie. This series, one of the things that I love about the first one is you learn so little about what's actually going on, which makes it scarier. You don't see much of what's going on, which makes it scarier. And... And it's so restricted, as I said, to that one camera that's often in a single position for some of the scariest scenes of the the movie. So you get to a sequel. What are you going to do with a sequel? Well, uh, add more cameras. Sure, like that makes sense. But also to me, it takes a lot of the the spookiness out of it. And also starting to explain it about, oh, you know, Christie's great, great grandmother or whatever made a deal with the devil for her firstborn son, blah, 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 blah. That yeah. that just it just sucks the life out of it exponentially for me. It's just I mean the it's mystery's just, gone. Yeah, it's just something that works best when it's in a bottle with like so little explanation and so it's just it's so constrained in the first one, and that's why the first one works for me. So any expansion upon that just kind of kills it for me a little bit. Or more than a little bit. So just a just a normal sleigh for this one's going to be coming. Not to... Yeah, not a, not a sleigh with prejudice. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll give it a sleigh. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I'm a sucker. I'm a, I guess I'm a sucker. I for totally get studio. what you're saying, Ro. I do, because when I was watching it, I was like, I like that, you know, they went out of their way to, like, explicate the fact that they're spending a bigger budget on it by, like, look, these are clearly, clearly this family like this sister is has more money and they have a bigger house 
So clearly, oh look, they're hiring, you know, these security guys or whoever to put the cameras up. So they're going to be better cameras. So it's going to look better, obviously, because Paramount or whoever, like, threw more money at it. But also, I'm just like, fuck. Like Patrick said, it it takes everything that would have been magical in the first one and, like, just explicates it into the ground. Which, and it doesn't explicate it a lot, but, like, really, the little they do just totally shits on it and ruins it, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now... Like, I get it, it's polished, and it it looks better, and, you know. You know, I think we kind of talked about briefly, like, to me, like, I did like the addition of the baby in it, simply for the fact that uh, maybe, to me, gave it a little more, like, gravitas of stakes or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, subconsciously. But also, it's just such um, an obvious... Yeah, I like, mean it's an obvious. Okay, there's a baby like and you know, a it's dog. Just so like we don't want to we don't want to actually you know write a character that they're gonna give a shit about. We'll just throw a baby in there, right? Like, and nobody wants to see a baby die. <laughs> like, I would. <laughs> until he's pointing at me <laughs> or a dog. The way I saw a baby and a dog, and I was like, oh my god, you just literally took the two things. I was whoever watches a movie, they're taboo, like. Yeah, the two taboos are, like, children and dogs. I was so happy. (laughs) And just stuck them in the same room together. And it's like, okay, I'm going to spend five minutes watching them wondering what awful thing is going to happen. I was so worried about that dog, and I was so glad that it didn't actually die. Yeah, oh my god. I, like, honestly, and I don't want to sound like I'm cold-hearted, but, like, I was much less concerned about the baby. I was like, this dog? Yeah. This dog is the protector. He's (laughs) a protector. That's the thing. I also, also, Exilia, it's she. Her name is Abby. What? The dog's what do you the mean? dog's name is Abby. The dog's name's Abby. Abby, yeah. Oh, I thought. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what? Don't don't misgender the dog. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm like, what? <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> but I I spent like an inordinate amount of time during this movie thinking about like the 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 work behind the scenes to get the performances out of the dog and the baby that they got. I was like, how did you get this baby? Probably the baby's parent was just standing off camera when the baby was like staring at the ghost. But I was just thinking about yeah. like, how do you get it to do that? How do you get it to start crying about the ghost? How do you get the dog to have these specific reactions to what's just outside the door? That was that was what most of my brain power was devoted to during this movie was just, how did, how did, how did they get the dog and the baby to do that? Me too. I was like, are they putting like beef jerky on the other side of the basement door? <laughs> yeah. Like literally, it's just so funny. Like I literally thought the same thing. Yeah. I was going to say as, uh, you know, Patrick's pure opposite in this dimension. Uh, <laughs> it, the, okay, the Exilia strike... is my pure opposite. Yeah. Hey, oh, yeah. That... You're a bro. I mean, a, I'm a, a you're my You're my vice opposite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, the two strikes against this movie for me were one, baby didn't die. It didn't kill the it baby. It didn't kill the baby. <laughs> uh, and two, they didn't kill the dog. Fuck. I'm I'm brutal. I'm brutal like that because you are a cold fucking. I'm cold. You are a sick fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's just to me the stakes are high and i know you're here for business <laughs> if you're willing to at least do one of those two it's things paranormal activity too how here for business could it be i'm just i'm just saying i think about i always liken it to my reaction of you know i remember uh like when the walking dead first came out and I remember watching The Walking Dead and having read The Walking Dead. When we when we finally get to the baby dies in the book. I'm sorry if you haven't read it. <laughs> the baby dies, and the baby doesn't just die. The mom is like murdered, and the baby's like in a baby Bjorn, and just gets crushed into the ground and just like dies, just gets crushed. And when I knew, I knew when I watched the show, I'm like, are they going to do it? Are we about the business? Not about the business. <laughs> Not about business for Rowan. The baby lived. I stopped watching eventually because I though I couldn't. I was like, eventually, didn't kill the baby. It, didn't, it didn't turn you off that much, clearly. <laughs> I'm just saying, you got I, seven seasons later. I decided listen, to stop watching. I it. watched the first season of that motherfucker, and I was like, nope, kill yeah. the baby, just kill no, the baby. The, the, no, I'm the same way. I I literally was. That the first season was enough. Yes. For me. Okay. So Mike is my Mike is my twin. <laughs> Mike is the yeah. anti exilia. <laughs> I that we are that is actually a lot That's of people say. <laughs> you have figured out the podcast. Yeah. 
<laughs> Wait, okay. Which... Yet somehow we're both the Shade Brigade. A um, lot of people say that. Who says that? <laughs> <laughs> I say it all the, the girl, time. The girl who sent all the hearts on Twitter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh. Wait, okay, which baby though, Rowan? I'm trying to remember the which baby you're talking about in the comic because I've read a lot of the comic. So like Rick's daughter. Oh, Rick's daughter. When the mom dies, she like falls on the baby. Oh, is that it? Died. Is that early? I read. I think like the first like fifty issues for sixty issues. Okay. It happened somewhere in the first fifty. Okay. Yeah, I just I don't remember that now. I fe- I fell off like I yeah same. Who knows? Maybe they brought the baby back. I think I read like I would be fifteen volumes or something, which is an absurd amount, but still not even close to the entire series. No, exactly. Yeah, no, no one should. Yeah. No, no one yeah. should. Let's get back to Paranormal <laughs> Activity Two. It wants to be talked about. I feel it, it, it's saying, Patrick, don't hate me. I'm a little shinier. I'm still good for something. Okay, can we? Can we talk about that basement sequence, though? Because I, I'm just curious how everyone else responded to it. Like, clearly, Exilia enjoyed it. I did not enjoy it. And I'm wondering what, what Rowan and Mike, what your responses were to that. Because I, I was, it was so chaotic. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's scary about it. Oh, okay. It. All right. Um, I, I thought this, this was another flash that I had where I thought it took one of the like good sequences of Blair Witch and put it in a house. Mm. And <laughs> no, I'm just saying like that's true. No, that makes sense. It's, it's trying it was, to yeah. capture no, that. To me it, it was true. cheap. To me it was a cheap way of like trying to get the audience on edge and like kind of scare them. You know, it was just like, oh okay, so the, it's shaking and it's night vision and you know that there's somebody down there and it's just instead of actually like doing something to generate like legitimate like fear and suspense they're just gonna shake the fucking camera around a bit you know what i mean and i just thought i just thought it was like a cheap way to to try to pull that off if you and i'm like come on like you 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 had several years to like figure this out couldn't you do better than this if you look back to the heavenly creatures episode you'll recall how much i hated that movie because of how much they ran and how chaotic that was to me. I chaos just is like, nope. Like I just, I find that scary. And that's how I felt about that scene. It's the equivalent to running. So one might say that you liked Paranormal Activity 2 more than Heavenly Creatures starring Kate Winslet and directed by Peter Jackson. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. A hundred percent. Okay. Good. I hated that movie. <laughs> I hated it. Oh. I've situated myself now. <laughs> <laughs> now I will say the basement part really was like I could take it or leave it. I I thought it was some of the logic in the basement didn't make sense to me. Like where. I get where he's using the camera, he's using the flashlight so he can see, like, he's using the night vision or whatever. But then, like, where he takes the camera and then turns it on himself, which, I mean, the minute he's doing that, I'm like, obviously I know what gimmick we're gonna try to do here, like, some, you know something's gonna happen and it kind of takes you out of it yeah i i just i didn't get that their basement was far too cluttered like for (laughs) anything maybe that's why i hated it so maybe you do hate clutter and i just want to say i do i also am terrified by basements so so scary i i should have been very affected by that scene like you were but i just it to me it was so obvious what they were trying to do that it just so can uh-huh. someone explain this to me? There was that surface you saw, maybe a table or something Shaking. that was vibrating yeah. and there were pieces yeah. of something on it. Does anyone know what that even was? It, no, I, think I was, was trying to figure that out. I was oh, like, is it supposed to be like a, it looked like a plastic. Yeah. I thought it looked like a trampoline. Yeah. Like well, you know how Yeah, because it was kind of. It looked and, like there were like you know pieces how- of glass on it or something. Yeah. You know how the demon is so powerful that it like opened all those drawers at once? Yeah. I just thought that was just like an incredible amount of energy. So it was like shaking the floor. I have no idea what it was. I don't know what the stuff on it was. That was just my guess. Well, and that touches on another thing that like sort of bothered me about this because in the first one, the powers of the demon seem to be like roughly limited to what a single person could accomplish. Mm-hmm. And in this movie, you know, I mean, so like that scene where all the kitchen cabinet doors blow open is scary and it's weird, but I had a 
problem with it because I'm like, okay, this is not what I've been shown this demon or presence or whatever can do. Like, how did it just accomplish this? Yeah. And it didn't... Yeah, it was not the usual MO. Right. Yeah. It didn't really make sense in the logic of the movie other than it's the second one, so we need to do something crazier, <laughs> you know? I thought the same thing because I asked her and I was like, how, like, they only have two arms, but that's right. just my own assumption because you don't know what they... Right. Well, though, when they're on the, the powder on the floor in the first one... They're two feet. Oh, maybe. Yeah, it's, yeah. We don't, we don't know don't how know. many arms they have, yeah. 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 But it still doesn't really click with how we've seen it operate before. No. Also, like, is it possibly the shittiest superpower of all time to just be able to open all the covered <laughs> doors at once? Yeah. It's like, what do you do? Like, oh, I just open all the covered <laughs> doors at once. I make a mess in people's homes. That's like a, that's like a Suicide Squad character, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although, we're this far into talking about the second one, I feel like I already want to revise my favorite scene to... The satisfaction I had when Katie actually does snap the uh, guy's neck. Yeah. I was like so happy about him dying. That was intense. I I, I really enjoyed that. Like I I'm sick like that. I just I was like, <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. And I think but see, this is my thing. This is why I am a such a big fan of like possession movies. Like, the Exorcist, like, I'm a huge Exorcist fan, like, I love that stuff, and even though we flirted with that in the first one, towards the end, I think because I just feel we got a little more of it in this one, maybe that was where my enjoyment actually really came from it, Mm. because I'm far more interested in the possession stuff. Mm. Yeah. of the demon that makes sense i that's so. fair i did really I, i've been harping on things i didn't like about this movie but I, the the performances again for the most part really impressed me in this movie again they feel like pretty naturalistic katie's back she still feels like a very real person christy her sister feels very real the dad maybe not quite so real but he still feels like a real low-key kind of menace <laughs> you know and Allie, yeah. like we pointed out that the, the, the stepsister, again, feels like a real person and, and someone you can root for a little bit in this world. So kudos to them, again, for pretty decent casting work on this. My only real last point I had on this was a, such a like low-key thing, and it could just be me, but I, I kind of was like, Quentin Tarantino, is that you? I noticed both of these films had really weirdly timed foot jokes in them <laughs> and weird shots of feet, like a lot of shots of feet. And I was just like, it's kind of weird. And it's kind of shots that like I felt weren't natural. It was just like, here's a lot of feet. Like the whole dad thing was kind of weird where she's like painting her toenails. Painting her toes, yeah. Oh yeah. And, and I was like, that kind of creeped me out on like a totally different level. Cause I was just like, he's like really lingering on this weird, like foot joke in her room in the dark for like an overtly long time. Yeah. I thought it was odd. I was like, it, it was an odd connection between the two films that I was just like, yeah, I was like, it, it, it's a lot of feet shots. I, I, Tarantino has to love these movies. (laughs) They've got to be up there for him. So why don't we go into Is It Unsettling? We'll start with you, Patrick. No. (laughs) Just how I figured you would answer. (laughs) No, I mean, I I, I tried to go into this with an open mind because I knew it didn't do a lot for me the first time. And um, yeah, no. I mean, no. (laughs) <laughs> that's all how about you exilia what was the question was it scary is it unsettling <laughs> you're only just you know a regular member of this podcast i never remember the categories um no besides that basement scene and that wasn't like oh my god the scariest thing i've ever seen it was just like in comparison to the rest of the movie except when she jumped <sighs> Always remember, people. It was just a startle. Paranormal activity too. (laughs) (laughs) It was just a startle. How about you, Mike? Uh, No, everything about it was like too telegraphed and like too obviously trying to like one up the one before it. 
It was just too obvious. Yeah, and I'm saying even though, as I said, and again, I, it was it was all the same, like very similar beats as the first one. So it's like whatever kind of novelty and shit the first one had when it came out to like creep people out. This one just it was just retreading it. So and, and I, like I said, I'm the same. Like even though I enjoyed the watching experience of this one more, this view around, I, it's not unsettling. Everything you knew was coming. Uh so. I say let's land this plane. It's been a pretty long plane ride. <laughs> Although we've enjoyed it. We've had great company. Although Patrick's, let's be real, Patrick's never coming back again. I mean, <laughs> I've been trying to fall asleep on the plane ride, but the three people next to me won't stop <laughs> fucking talking. Oh my God. Just <laughs> hey, are you interested in becoming a horror hound? Then join us at www.patreon.com slash podcast. And uh, check out everything we have to offer. We have uh, cool things from podcast shoutouts to picking movies all the way to uh, maybe getting yourself a free t-shirt. So uh, if you're interested in joining us and becoming a horror hound, join us at patreon.com slash podcast. So let's get into rating this one. Uh, we will start with you, Exilia. I'm going to give it an okay. I liked it a lot better than the first one, but I hated the first one, so it's not a good measure. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. Like, if I never saw either of these movies in my life, I'd be fine with it. And uh, I will also give it an okay. I enjoyed this more than the first one. I am interested at some point revisiting the first one. We did watch these during the day. So we had our curtains closed. We guys. did, but I'd be interested <laughs> in like a full night experience in watching the first one and seeing how that goes. Yeah, yeah, Chris Chris would disqualify you guys automatically for watching it automatically. The day. Yeah. <laughs> uh how about you, Mike? Hmm. Ooh, deliberation. I mean, honestly, like nay. <laughs> <laughs> Like, that's what we have to come down on, because the main thing it had going for it was that I was marginally more invested because the characters were more awful. (laughs) And that engaged me more because I was, like, angrier at them. (laughs) So that's that's not a good thing, (laughs) obviously. (laughs) Like, what can I say? It would but it was just. You know, it was one of those things where I was, like, frantically scrawling notes on, like, how much I hate this person and that person and why are they doing this. So, that's not engagement. Like, it's not true engagement. And how about you, Patrick? Um, (laughs) much as I enjoyed watching Mike's reaction to Exilia's review, (laughs) and much as I want to mirror my twin, I think I'm, I think I'm going to jump on the okay train. It, I, I, I wouldn't call it bad. I wouldn't discourage anyone from watching it necessarily. It's just a fairly mediocre experience for me. You wouldn't discourage them, but you wouldn't come over and watch it with them. Right. Oh, exactly. No, I would never come over and watch this with someone. I would not Netflix and chill. And this would be <laughs> on our, on every horror movie on Netflix's scale, a cue it for me all right throw it in the queue let it languish for (laughs) months maybe (laughs) until it gets removed until netflix takes it off exactly (laughs) yeah (laughs) well let's get into the budget game for paranormal activity 2 we will start with the cost as always and we will start with exilia this time 32.5 million (laughs) dollars All right, so Exilia is going for uh, the Oscar-winning film, <laughs> Paranormal Wait, Activity 2. you said this, what the cost was? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, that's what I meant. <laughs> I, not, I have no concept of these things. <laughs> Patrick, we'll uh, let you go next. Are you going to highball this? Yeah, I'm going to say 75 mil. No, I w- I'm going to go with uh, five million uh mike <laughs> yeah i definitely i don't know what x was thinking but yeah i'd say probably like 
I don't know why I'm going to highball and go like 10. I feel like that's way out in left field, but 10 is what I'm going to, 10 is what I'm going to say. I feel like they threw money at it, but like not that much money. <laughs> okay, the budget's 33.3 million. <laughs> so uh, there's no like, there's no close tie or anything. Patrick is going to take it. Yes. It yeah. was three, it was $3 million. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Oh, I yeah. highballed it, even. That's, like, nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to see this film on <laughs> Exilia's $33 million budget. It might be better. I mean, yeah, look, like, they, there were seven cameras for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and they all I sucked. mean, they must have bought, like, four sage sticks. That's, like, five bucks a pop. So. Oh, my mouth hurts. <laughs> my cheeks. So uh, we will get into laughing. what it made. We'll let you start, Patrick. Um, remind me, the first one made like one ninety or something million. Right? Yeah, the first one made uh one ninety five and some change. So I'm gonna say two ten. Mike, see, here's the thing. I'm tempted to do the same, but I'm also like, I feel like because there was a couple of years, maybe people had cooled. Mm. So I'm gonna say like a hundred fifty. Again, again. That's just I'm just like hedging my bets here. Okay, Exilia. I'd say a hundred and seventy-five million. Hundred and seventy-five million. So Exilia is gonna take <laughs> this. Pretty close. One hundred and seventy-seven million. Ooh, that's really close. So, uh, yeah, not not the return of the first one, but I mean, you know, they threw a little more than like two hundred thousand dollars at it, but big enough that you know we we're on like movie number eighty-six or something. Yeah. So, you know, Lord knows, I we'll probably be getting these for the rest of our lives. I feel. I was shocked that there's a new one out. I. How long has it been since the last one? I, I just thought it had died off, finally. Never, never. I did too, and it was when I went on IMDb to, you know, just figure out... Actually, and I'll tell you why I went on IMDb, because the friend in the first one, I had to look up and go, is that the woman from Malignant? Oh. Because I, I was like, she looks a lot like her. She's got the same haircut, yeah. the bangs and everything. And, you know, it, and again, because of the cheap cameras, it was hard to tell. Yeah. I was like, she looks a bit rough, but that could be her. <laughs> so I had to go on and look it up and it wasn't her. But I when I typed it in, I was like, holy shit, there's one in 2021. What the hell? What are the odds? Mm -hmm. Like, I was actually shocked that there was in this year of our Lord. But <laughs> I guess what can you make in your house with like four cast members and five or six crew members yeah. perfect covid movie mm -hmm. <laughs> i i think it was done it was called host uh... oh don't do that <laughs> yeah we should we should wind this down before i get started on host <laughs> you'll be back for host <laughs> oh no oh. please <laughs> Before we wrap up, I want to give you the floor, Patrick. I want to let you uh, promote whatever. Brag. We, we should have introduced you as Mr. Variety. That <gasps> yes, should be your congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I mean, I, I told you already, I'm on Every Horror Movie on Netflix. You can find that by looking up Every Horror Movie on Netflix or looking us up on social at Amon cast and that's e h m o n cast for every horror movie on netflix uh and these uh mike and rowan are saying i'm mr variety because we were in variety variety highlighted us on a list of like spooky podcasts to watch in october or something like that and we were on a list with uh extremely respectable company that i feel we had no right to be in the company of but obviously we were happy to be there um i don't know what else should i talk about rowan and i have been on uh the podcast gray malk and lane together if you want to hear us talk about yes. x-men that's a that's a fun time love that podcast and love x-men love talking about x-men um that's it. I yield the floor. Right on. Well, everything he talked about, go check it out. Uh, go check out his new podcast, Every Movie on Netflix, <laughs> that I started. Uh, I'm sure he's going to get right on that. Oh, you, yeah. You'll get, you'll get reviews to every Adam Sandler movie ever oh, created. Ugh, Hubie Halloween was Don't enough. invite me to any of those. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Rowan, though, is, what's, what's the name of our podcast? Oh, it is every horror movie on Netflix. He got it! <laughs> I got it. Uh, so Chris and 
Stephen can be proud of me. <laughs> and I keep saying at some point we're going to, Stephen was going to be on earlier in the year and the schedules just didn't work yeah. out, which is a shame because he missed knife plus hard. Ooh. And, uh, but I mean, we were, we were messaging each other about it anyway, the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and we will have Chris on because at some point we're going to talk about more Saw. Oh. And I know Chris is, has told me if we talk about Saw, he will be highly offended if yeah. he doesn't get an invite. Oh, Chris takes Saw very seriously. <laughs> I, I've watched the almost the entire Saw franchise. with. I mean, I've seen the entire Saw franchise and I've watched most of it with Chris. So, yeah. Other than that, what we will leave you with is our announcement for our next film, our next movie we are reviewing. The pick is the, I guess, kind of modern classic now of Hereditary. So we, uh, you know, Colton never misses a chance to review some A24. A24. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, we'll be back for that. And then, geez. Christmas. Christmas is coming and we have some Christmassy picks coming. So be on the lookout for that. But I think that is everything for this evening. Thank you for supporting. As always, we love seeing all the views and where you're from and, you know, make sure to Sh- shout out to the And what's people. in your garbage cans. Yeah. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to all the people involved in Dare Bunker. Yeah, getting lots of that uh, Dare Bunker love. We've had, like, the actor and the directors and and everyone just kind of share the, the podcast and share the love, even though we may have not rated it greatly. <laughs> but uh, we love that. We love that. Uh, so, yeah, I think that is everything. I am your humble host, Rowan. Bye. It's Exilia. It's Mike. Bye. It's Patrick. Also, bye. See you later. We're going to expand our weekly video segment to take you into the back shelves of your local video store. Back where it says horror videos and where kids are devouring some awful films that we call the video nasties. Are you freebasing? Inquiring minds want to know. I have to break free from this culture of mechanical reproductions and the thick encrustations dying on the surface. But the prime time gets. Mom with the new flesh. The pain, I can assure you, will be exquisite. As for our deaths, come with me and be immortal. We have such sights to show you. We've got to return some video.